What's up guys? I hope everyone's had a Merry Christmas because now it's 2024 and it's time for episode 4. In this episode, we're going to be looking at machete fights from Colombia. Out of all the countries in the series, Colombia is the most similar to the Dominican Republic in terms of culture and origin being another former Spanish colony like the DR. Also like the DR, Colombia is very agricultural, so machetes are very common. Colombia has almost five times the population of the DR, so finding machete fights was not difficult. I couldn't tell you which country has more machete fights per capita, but Colombia definitely has a machete fighting culture. In terms of skill, I would say on average, they're almost on par with the DR. Obviously, some fighters in Colombia are better than others, just like in the DR. Of course, I have also seen more machete fights from the DR personally, as that is the main focus of this channel. So for that reason, I have to say I have seen Dominican machete fighters who are very skilled versus machete fighters from Colombia who are just good. What I mean is I've seen Dominican machete fighters perform moves that I've never seen before, whether it's a perfectly timed counterattack, an agile evasive maneuver, or an aggressive combination. The best machete fighters I've seen to date were Dominicans. And I'm definitely not trying to put down Colombians by saying so, and I think I've said enough. So let's get into this first video, which is more of a training and demonstration video titled Escrima Colombiana, Escrima de Machete y Bordón. Es una serie de tiros. La combinación de todos esos tiros se llaman cruces. Por ejemplo, esta es una cruz que se llama los cinco tiros. Son dos tiros de pierna, un vertical, una estocada y un vertical. Eh, otra cruza, estos son los ocho tiros. Es un tiro de pierna, otro tiro de pierna, un vertical, dos transversales, un carrilero y un estocado. Un tajo y un estocado. Un tajo y un estocado. A la vida, papá. Dos de pierna, dos transversales, un carrilero. Ya ahí cuando, ahí cuando ya en ejemplo la velocidad tiene que ponerse la fila porque tiene un ciervo en la mano. Obviously, a real machete fight isn't going to look like a choreographed demonstration with every swing being met with a block. Along with advancing, stepping forward with your machete swings can be viable, especially if you're running in to close the distance. What I do like about this demonstration is they are moving forwards and backwards while they swing instead of just standing still. In a machete fight, you have to move and keep your distance when it serves you. Now let's check out some machete fights from Colombia. Honestly, there were too many to pick from, so I'm going to try to blitz through as many as I can. So first up, we have a machete fight in a barbershop. Looks like the guy in black retreated into the barbershop because he's outnumbered, taking on two opponents. He narrowed the battlefield, so now they can only fight him one at a time. He should keep his machete in front of him so he's not limited from where he can attack. There is some debris on the floor, which is something you always have to be mindful of. Then the other guy gets tagged in, then the guy in the back in red decides to get involved and the fight becomes a two on two as they all run outside. The guy in black did not miss a beat taking the opportunity of now having a fair fight and pursued his opponent. The main takeaway here is if you're outnumbered you can use your environment to help even the odds by narrowing the battlefield. Next up we have a machete versus a knife. Uf. 
The guy in blue wielding the knife has it in a downward fang-like position. In Dominican knife fighting, they tend to hold their knives upright like a machete. They're both doing a decent job moving into attack and then retreating to avoid their opponent's attack. The guy in white does some unnecessary feet movements and he's holding his machete over his shoulder, which is probably why he's only doing single overhead strikes. The guy in blue is clearly at a disadvantage and doesn't know how to close the distance. He starts posturing with his offhand in a circular motion, which doesn't do anything. It just kind of makes his arm a protruding target. But it does look like he's holding something, potentially for shield use. Then it looks like he tries to get a stick to get over his range disadvantage, but the fight's already over. A chair shield is a great way to overcome a range disadvantage, but if you don't have a chair shield, you would have to follow the same strategy, which is wait for your opponent to swing and miss, then quickly charge them to land a blow. The chair shield just adds a layer of protection because this move is incredibly risky. I've only seen this done once, which goes back to my earlier statement, the best fighters I've seen were Dominicans. For our next fight, we have a shirtless southpaw. The guy with the shirt faints and then swings. Shirtless swings low from the left, then he does some machete posturing and faints. They both swing aggressively from right and left. Then a random bystander decides to get involved in this one too, only to run away. They both seem to be pretty evenly matched. Neither was really willing to advance and close the distance. We did see some fainting, machete posturing, multi-directional attacking, and level switching from shirtless by swinging low, as well as using his shirt as a shield by keeping it in his offhand. This was a solid matchup. So next up, we have a knife fight. They're both wielding their knives in that downward position. The guy in yellow steps back with his front foot to avoid an attack. Then he starts to walk away from the fight. The other guy throws something, so Yellow Shirt re-engages. They both try to attack with the same downward stab. Then Yellow Shirt again walks away. I think the main takeaway from this fight is holding the knife in the upward position and using it as you would a machete, as Dominicans do, will give you more options in a fight. If you're interested in Dominican knife fighting, I have a video on that as well. Now for the next fight. This is the longest one, so I saved it for last. The guy on the left with the hat has his machete over his shoulder. He swings hitting his opponent's machete as he retreats. His opponent lunges and swings from the right. A police officer is watching the duel. The guy on the right faints. The guy with the hat advances and comes down with the same swing multiple times, hitting his opponent's machete as he retreats. His opponent swings, then it's just more of the same. We're going to fast forward through the stalemate. We get more of the same, fast forward through the stalemate. The camera angle is pretty bad. Then it's just more of the same. So what we have here is the guy with the hat was somewhat willing to engage, but he's limiting himself with how he can attack by keeping his machete over his shoulder. His opponent swung a few times, but was mainly taking a defensive approach, which could be a good strategy if utilized correctly, like using parries and counterattacking, or even by giving your more aggressive opponent the room they need to make a mistake. In this fight, neither were really that aggressive or highly skilled. This was definitely a lower tier machete fight. The main takeaway from this one is keep your machete in front of you. This might be the last video of this series, at least for now, unless I come across another country that has a machete fighting subculture. Well, I'm gonna end the video here, guys. If you liked it, please hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Learn the real martial art of Dominican machete fighting, only with the Dominican Academy course, only available at Dominican.net. We cover everything from the basics to the advanced.
the only self-defense course in the world that's based on real sword fights. Get the Domenicon Academy course now, only at Domenicon.net.